Okay, good morning everybody. It's 8.30 time to call the meeting of uh, December 10th to order. Our first item is to approve the agenda and we do have one agenda addition today and that's a request to repurchase tax forfeited property and that will be done by Nancy. Mr. Chair, I would like to uh, just talk a bit about the local water management plan. I have a question or two, so okay. we'll pull that off. Yeah. Okay, and we'll pull the local water plan down to the regular agenda. Any other additions or corrections? Move to approve with changes. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carried. Okay, we'll move on to citizens to be heard. No citizens to be heard today. Approval of bills and vouchers. So moved. You know, motion second. And second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion is carried. And we did have. Um, Two employee recognitions today, however, they could not be here today. And, here's my notes on that. and they were for uh, Gerald Stephanie, shop foreman of the highway department for 25 years, and Chris McCarthy, 20 years with the sheriff's department. We want to thank them for their years of service, and we will get their plaques to them. So. Okay, we'll move on then to the um, Request for extension support. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. Thanks for the time. Um, so Kathy Richards submitted a resignation um, effective the end of January, and so we're requesting to post and fill this full-time position. Um, the only changes we made to the position description were to um, for the education, we put a one-year certificate in administrative support and a associate's degree preferred. And then the experience we increased from three to six months to one to three years. And this is aligning this support position with the other county support positions. Um, and then we're also requesting that um, we kind of have an overlap between the two so Kathy can provide some training for like a week or two. So with the, the savings between um, Kathy's pay and benefits and what the new person would uh, is estimated to start at um, we'd have about uh, $3,200 in savings which would uh, right. definitely be more than enough to cover that uh, any questions Mr. Chair I would move that we uh, uh, allow Ben to advertise for the new position and uh, offer our um, thanks to Kathy Richards for her many yeah, years of yes. service very good. Well, a second. A motion. And a second. Any further discussion? Is she retired or resigning? Um, resigning, as she said. Oh, okay. Very good. I think it's the same in this case. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> kind of the same, I guess. Okay. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed the same. Motion carried. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Dave, we have a request to fill the highway department position. Yeah, we had a 29-year employee retire, and that's going to be effective uh, December 31st. Uh, he currently runs motor grader for Clay County, just on the south side of Moorhead. Um, what I'd like to do, according to the union uh, policies, would be to advertise internally for five days and then see what candidates would be uh, willing to um, move into that motor grader position so it might be a truck driver it could be one from the sign or the shop it's kind of hard to say and then at that time uh, we would like to advertise probably internally and externally for whatever happens after that change so <coughs> can it also be uh, somebody moving from another location as a as a grader operator yep so yep that and that's kind of I think why the union kind of has that in there it's going to give some flexibility for movement around so we need to post in the shops and in any conspicuous place for five days and then we'll kind of see what's kind of an internal movement may or may not happen and then we'll know like I said if we're going to uh, advertise for a motor grader position or a truck driver in the past it's always been a progression where the truck drivers move into a, a blade district I guess I think the pay is a little bit higher I guess it is a little higher so uh, but that's not always been the case some people aren't really suited to sit in a blade all day long they they like the you know variances of being out fixing on the roads and plowing snow in the winter time so as well to see I move to approve this okay we have a motion second, Frank. second. second. Right. further discussion 
All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed the same. We'll be carried. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Steve. Yeah, they're here just in time. <laughs> we're running a little bit ahead of schedule, and we're ready for um, detox. detox. If you want to come up. <laughs> we're just in time. Yes, you're just in time. <laughs> So you're here requesting to add camera and upgrade equipment to the detox. Correct. And, uh, but reinforcements Joe. with Joe here. Yep. Today. Yeah, I'm just going to help him out with this one. All right. He can explain more of the details. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. And morning. if you have any budget questions, I have Mary here too. All right. She's the Google winner. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're requesting to add a camera and upgrade equipment and detox. You want to tell them exactly? You well, maybe tell of, us why. First? It, yeah, it kind of started off. With what happened was we we had a problem area where we needed to add a fifth camera to the system. Yeah, a fifth, fourth camera, fourth, fourth camera to the system, and uh, we went to look to upgrade and come to find out it's an old analog system, and to try to add a fourth camera would be somewhere in the thousand, about a thousand dollars, and the system's probably going to be. Obviously, within within two years, probably is what they figured. So, what we did is then me and Janelle and Kathy uh, McKay met with uh, Electro Watchman and also uh, Terry McGarry, which is our uh, electrician, and sat on kind of had a meeting and, and talked about exactly what the needs are for the detox facility. So, we we uh, came to the conclusion that we actually needed to add a fifth camera to get exactly all the angles that we wanted to do and then uh, this upgrade would give us the ability to have all the screens the cameras on the screen right now you can't you can only have to push the button it's that old where you only get one shot so you can't see everything so this would give us the ability to do that it, it we would switch to a digital camera system so and by bringing in Terry McGarry was a little bit uh, more cost effective way than having just electro watchman come in and hire out another electrician right now. So it uh, <coughs> came around that 8,000. Yep. It was about how much it would cost to do all this. That would give us five cameras, an or, uh, updated uh, receiver, and, uh, and then 32 inch monitor. And it's no additional county funding required. <coughs> it's a safety issue. This would, I was gonna note too, that this would also uh, give us the opportunity to add eight more cameras in the future if we ever needed if detox needed to expand or whatever it, Right now we can't add anything So it would uh, it would give us ability for future plans too if we needed Mr. Chair, I move the request in front of us Okay, we have a motion to approve the request Second Second any further discussion? Was there no camera at all in this area before? Yeah, well, it, the original problem started out with no camera. There was four cameras, but this one corner was kind of a, a blind spot, and that was where some incidents were happening. So yeah. they felt they needed to add this camera in, and that's where I came in to right. check it out. And we thought it was outdated, so. Thank you. All right, any further discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same motion carried. <coughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> the uh, topic on the uh, diversion budget, we're going to wait and hold that on time just in the event that others are here for that. I'm going to do the yeah, John. If uh, we, we'll go, we'll move to the um, to the re removed item from consent, and that's uh, your discussion regarding the local water management plan. Yeah, the state has, has allowed. You know, we've in the past we've had this problem with uh, we we have at least three water plans that are developed for the same area, and this uh, I was on the committee uh, number, several years ago that that came up and and it was passed by the legislature. We should have one watershed, one plan, and I'm wondering if, if that's what this will facilitate is that uh, our soil water conservation will, we're giving them the authority to, to work on that one plan or are they, are they 
going to do their own plan by themselves. You know, if so, it's going to be a duplication. They need to work with the watersheds and, and do, it, <coughs> do it that way. But so I'm, I'm just questioning what uh, I'm not against in reading the words of the resolution. I mean, it sounds like it's it could be done in the right way, uh, even with the resolution wording. But I I don't know what their plan is. I wish they were here to to talk about it. Did anybody know uh, Frank? You're on the. Have they talked about it at the? No, they board, haven't. Board meeting. Because I can't update you on that. Uh, I see their well, I meet, I I see like the meeting right now. So. Oh, okay. I just would like it in the record that they that they seriously consider the one one watershed one plan uh, approach. I know we got a meeting tomorrow afternoon. Uh, that's, I could Is this uh, so time sensitive that we'd have to do this today? Could we wait to get John's answer to? I don't know what they're. Brian, do you have any well, idea? Yes, Mr. Chair, when when uh, Lynn came in and talked about this just a little bit. Uh, he wanted this on the board and basically what it was was to align the timelines because the water plans mature at different times and this was to extend it or, or it was to set the water plans universally on the same time frame. To be, uh, I, won't, I won't say it's gonna guarantee them one water plan, but it was a step in that direction. Okay. So it was a timing issue that that. So they are that, considering that. that I, I I believe so. I, I can't swear to that, but I know it was a timing issue for getting all of the water plans on the same schedule, so that and I can't say that it so that it would be universally one water plan, but it would be a step in that direction. So it was a timing issue, is is what he explained when he uh, contacted us about that. I believe Vicky wasn't that, uh, and then he sent this over. I would. Uh, Oh, that was the time issue. September, there was the one requesting the extension. The extension to get this right. on the plan. Yeah. Well, Mr. Chair, I would I would move the resolution, uh, but I would like to to just add the, the instruction that we would prefer that they they work towards the one plan uh, for the watershed. So. Okay, we'll follow up on that too. All right. No motion is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carried. Nancy. We'll do the agenda addition. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Nancy. Um, I was gone yesterday when this phone call came in, so I don't know all the details about it. All right. Um, apparently we are scheduled to have our tax forfeit sale today. Um, we did get a request yesterday for repurchase of one of those properties and they have the right to do that up until the time it sells at tax forfeit sale. Um, the um, board is to determine is, is it a hardship for the person purchasing it or if it's in the best interest of the county that you approve the repurchase. Um, this Evelyn, as far as I know, has not lived in this property for quite some time. I don't know what kind of a hardship that would create. As far as it being in the best interest of the county, like I say, we're having our tax forfeit sale. We don't know if somebody's going to buy it or not. I guess I would personally prefer someone have it that we know that's going to buy it and mm -hmm. get it back on the tax rolls rather than to take our chances at the uh, tax forfeit sale. Is this a house or? Yes. Or a house? Yep. house out in the country. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Nancy, what is your recommendation then? Would you repeat it, please? I Sorry. guess I would recommend that they, the repurchase be approved. Thank you. Yeah, I would move, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, the resolution as, as stated uh, in the, and it's certainly seems to me too that's in the best interest of the county to get it uh, back if, uh, if we have a sale and nobody buys and we're still in the same exactly same predicament mm -hmm. so. All second. okay oh. we have a motion in the second so evidently they haven't paid taxes for quite a while then 2000, it, right 2008 mm -hmm. all right any further discussion no all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed the same Motion carried. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Yes. 
people working over here. Yeah, I think we'll still wait a few, a few minutes. So let's go with committee reports here. Um, Wayne, do you want to start with your first? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I didn't have so many as you gentlemen did. But on Thursday, December 4th, Children's Mental Health Local Advisory Council. There was routine business. We welcome new members John Feinberg from Clay County Juvenile Detention Center and George Ryder, a consumer. Agency reports from the Mobile Crisis Unit, Clay County Social Services, the Clay County Collaborative, Clay County Public Health, Kindred Family Services, and Kindred Family Services is not out of Kindred, North Dakota. It's all across Minnesota. Uh, they have to do with adoption uh, and respite services and foster care. And then also from the Clay County Detention Center. And it was a very good meeting, and that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Frank, would you care to go next? Yeah, um, <clears throat> last Thursday I went to a courageous le leadership training that was conducted uh, for all the, um, I guess, supervisors here in the county, and it was very, uh, Dave Cornell gave that thing, it was a very good presentation to the employees. What I liked about it was a good involvement from all the supervisors. They really. I mean, they really looked like they're working together and stuff like that. And it was, uh, it was not only a good time, but it was also a, a good learning experience as far as how, how to work on leadership abilities and stuff like that. So I, that was a good session. And of course, I attended the um, AMC thing down in St. Cloud Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I attended a lot of different sessions. The MRCC, the general government, went into the retirement one uh, as far as see what they got and uh, just. Okay, got some good presentations, you know. Uh, general government uh, got a lot of stuff that they're presenting to the legislator this year and that we voted on. So, other than that, was it. All right. Uh, mainly MRCC uh, for me and uh, AMC at the, the annual conference. Uh, uh, MRCC was, I thought, uh, uh, Good this year. A lot of people attended on Sunday night and uh, had three uh, representatives there. Um, uh, one of them brought up, which I thought was interesting, he's going to be the new chair of the House Ag uh, Policy Committee, and uh, he brought up the, the topic of uh, ag valuations and the problems uh, for farmers around the state. And so, uh, something we've been discussing and are going to be taking a look at to see, you know, if there's anything we can do to help uh, uh, ag landowners with that issue. So um, that was a good session. Um, attended the public safety session that I'm assigned to. Uh, had a lengthy discussion there on uh, finishing up the armor radio system, which we're working on here in Clay County, and uh, you know, several other general public safety related topics. Uh, we went to the other things related to the, the conference, and then uh, the last thing I attended was a session uh, by MCIT on uh, data privacy, and uh, it was a good session, and uh, uh, I think uh, maybe Clay County should look at having MCIT come up sometime in the future and put on a session for employees, so that was it for me. All right. I, got, I was just going to add one. I also went to a session on economic development, and I know we have an ED economic development um, mm -hmm. plan here, you know, but I don't know if we really have anybody that does economic development. I mean, I know, like, Dilwood has someone working there, and Moorhead has people like that. I don't know if Clay County itself has anybody bringing in for economic development for Clay County, you know, and I don't know if that's something in the future we should be looking at. I mean, we've got this fund or the, this thing, this plan for people that they can utilize, but are we bringing anybody, are we telling anybody about it or stuff like that? So I don't know if that's something that we should be looking at in the future. So. Well, we can have it on the agenda. I know we, we fund 
we fund other organizations to do that on our right. behalf. Yes, uh, I think the Fargo more it uh, yeah. does that. Yeah. Like but they, we do. Uh, I think the constant, uh, the constant uh, issue that you're referring to is the funds, the revolving fund that we have available through West Central Initiative. I think that's what you're referring to that we have these funds available for, and yeah. and how do how do how are we getting that out to people? Let them know that it's available, and and uh, we're always talking about ways to make that better. Uh, I, we do know that we've contacted all the lending institutions. They're aware of what we have available, so that when somebody, young entrepreneur or whatever, goes into them, they um, they are informed of of that. But but if you'd like, we could. We could well, no, I, I don't know. It's just something in the future, I guess. I, I don't know. It's just uh, we have to look at that sometime. I think you know okay. that. I mean, Farnsville has their own person doing it. Dilbert has their own person. Holly, I think, has their own. Morehead has their own person. Do we do something for Clay County? You know, and I realize we, we are part of. Uh, I think the Fargo Moorhead uh, there, we're part of that. You know, we give funds to that. You know, and, um, so are those other towns. But uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's that's something we should be looking at, putting out a brochure. So, right. okay, thank you. Nancy, <laughs> you're back. <laughs> yes. I just talked to Lori, and uh, she's in the diversion meeting right now. She said she had um, told this person that they were supposed to be here at the meeting at 8.30, and they didn't show up. So she said, up the stairs, um, if we could amend the resolution to say if the approval, if they bring in a check by quarter to 10 today. If they don't, then we're going to go ahead and sell it at our tax forfeit sale. Okay. Does that meet your Yeah, that's motion? fine. Does that meet your second? I believe you're going to second it. All right. All right. So um, uh, we'll just go back and re-amend that motion to include the, that. Document. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same motion. Thank there you, you go. Very Thanks, much. Nancy. <laughs> okay, I think we're close enough now. Brian, do you want to come over and we'll we'll go with our other committee reports uh, after this uh, budget authorization for the diversion project. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Good morning. members of the Commission. Uh, what you have before you, you have a few documents uh, in regards to the 2015 Diversion Authority budget. And uh, just to, I guess, read the, the memo that we put together, which is really kind of a summary of what Moorhead had and what was received from the uh, Diversion Authority is that uh, a copy of the 2015 fiscal year 2015 diversion authority budget uh, including an overview of the sources and uses of funds and a cumulative spending report is enclosed for background no minnesota funds from clay county or city of moorhead are required for the fiscal year 2015 budget no minnesota funds a formal amendment to the limited joint powers agreement is not necessarily at this at this time as well so what we're looking for is a motion to approve the fiscal year 2015 diversion authority budget and why that is coming to each of the six entities that are a member of the diversion it does state uh, i believe i'll say in their in their um, uh, bylaws uh, that each budget is required to have the approval of the individual units of government that comprise the fm diversion and that is of course the city of fargo and the moorhead who are the sponsors and now there has been a third one the diversion authority is added but the six units we're talking about is Fargo, Moorhead, Clay, and Cass County, and then the two watersheds that represent either side of the river. And uh, you'll see that there's a budget attached into the tune of $211,100,000. And there's also, you'll see where the revenue source is coming from for those, and that is uh, the Cass County sales tax of 13 million, the city of Fargo sales tax of 13 million, the State Water Commission Appropriations, and that's the state of North Dakota, um, <coughs> State Water Commission Appropriation of $93 million, and that's eligible for certain components and things that, that uh, I mean, I didn't have the time to go into all that. And then they did um, seek a loan of $92,100,000, which they're uh, will are you know, in the process of spending that for a total resources of $211,100,000. And then it shows down there the expenditures that are planned, land acquisition, construction in town, and, and levies in uh, Fargo, design and permitting, 
project management and legal fees and other obligations and debt services to the United States uh, on this U.S. bank note. I shouldn't say United States, the bank note. Um, so I'm asking for your approval as the unit of government of the cargo uh, FN diversion to move forward on this. Okay. Any questions? Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. um, we have Don Nelson in our audience today, and Don sent each of us a, a memo, and Brian, you have taken yes, a look at this. Mm -hmm. And I think Don had some very um, legitimate concerns. Could you speak to some of these? And maybe, um, I know Don probably would like to have a word or two to say too, but could you speak to some of these first, some of Don's concerns, as it might affect our vote today or not? Sure. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> I, can, I can try to speak to that. I don't have the letter in front of me. But I know one of the issues was the le legality of, of obligating the, the uh, units of government without uh, having first the, the GIS or the EIS completed from the state of Minnesota. And are we committing funds that the state of Minnesota, the city of Moorhead, or Clay County in that case obligated to? Uh, at a later date, and I think it's been made very, very clear at the FM diversion that the any funds from the state of Minnesota for the construction of this project are going to come from the state of Minnesota, not from local entities of government. And you, you've seen the years that have been in negotiation over that issue, and I suppose so you can argue whether it's a legal point or not. Uh, it may not be decided for 10 years whether, whether there's an obligation that started by each of the entities uh, passing a resolution to, uh, to support this or a motion to support the, uh, the budget. Um, that's not going to be answered here today or probably anytime soon because we can assume that this is a legal document and that's where we are pursuing. but. As we know, anything is up for a challenge in our legal system, but uh, we feel we're on solid ground here uh, in regards to passing the uh, a motion to support this budget that no Minnesota funds are being committed to this project. And Brian, wasn't the in the first GPA agreement that we had, didn't that emphasize that also in the in the agreement that Minnesota no Minnesota funds would be established or? or no Minnesota dollars would go into this project unless they came from the state of Minnesota? That's exactly right. And yes. so we, we're not modifying the JPA. No, we're not. All no. we're doing is we're approving the next year's annual budget. That's that exactly did have right. a carryover in it, by the way. Yes, it did. That's correct. It mm -hmm. did. So, so the original language of the JPA still supports the fact that no Minnesota money will come in until such time that it comes from the state of Minnesota. That is correct. If and when that happens. If and when that happens, yes. John. And what about if the state decides not to? Are we going to be obligated to, to uh, cover for the state? No. Well, in, under what? No, that's, that, que that question was asked. This question was asked, asked by the city council. This one went back by the Morehead City Council even when uh, well, he's not on the, on the board anymore, but he asked the same question. And all the, both legal and attorneys said no, that we, are, we would not be held liable. That uh, North Dakota is putting that money up w with the idea in mind that if and when Minnesota gets the money, then they will contribute. So, and that, uh, Hintemar, Mark Hintemar was on, because I remember that discussion. And that went through, uh, that had the approval of the, the city council attorneys and, it ha and so we, we asked the same thing when we approved the JPA here. Mm -hmm. And I believe Michelle was still our uh, county attorney working at the time and she said the same thing, that there is no responsibility or liability on the part of Clay County or the city of Moorhead. Yes. Nothing's changed. There's no language to change that. That's correct, uh, Mr. Chair. And, and that's why I guess I stated my statement earlier you can argue all day long there's an interpretation of this or interpretation of that. But the statements have been said many, many times, and there's clarity that there's no Minnesota money going into right. this. Uh, and it's been said also that from Clay County or the city of Moorhead, it'll be state funds that support this mm -hmm. uh, project if and when the project uh, uh, 
there is an expectation of Minnesota funds. In fact, the percentage of what Minnesota uh, is benefiting from this project is still probably up for interpretation, right. whether it be 8%, 10%, 6%, uh, if you're looking at the protection of the Moorhead and the residents in and around the Moorhead area, uh, what percentage of that uh, has not been determined yet. So there isn't even an established figure as to uh, the benefit on the Minnesota side. Mm -hmm. so. Great. Yeah. There's six entities involved in this thing here that it's supposed to prove. What if one of them doesn't approve it? What happens to this? Does the budget not go through then? Or well, I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what would happen. Say if the if the Buffalo Red didn't support it, I, I don't know uh, what would happen there. Um, I, I I can't tell you that. I don't think. I think something's still going to move move forward. I mean, is it still four? I mean, if there's six of them involved, the three or more have to approve it. Or okay, I just want to see yeah. if it's just one. Is it's just one that could hold up the whole thing? Okay. The, the other question is uh, is relating to um, violating state law by going ahead with the project before the EIS is completed. Um, how do we uh, how do we answer that one? Well, and I think um, I, I think that was first off um, the diversion authority and its council never believed from day one that we violated Minnesota law. That that's that's the position of the diversion authority and its legal counsel that we never violated, I, I and I've never seen any charges filed any against anybody for for um, breaking Minnesota law on this deal. Well, there's uh, a lawsuit that's still but, pending. But well, the lawsuit. Uh, but what we did do is um, after when members of DNR were were at a diversion authority meeting and they basically said. What really caused them the issue was when the diversion authority wanted to construct that those levees to a 500-year level without having the EIS done because it was the 500-year level that they would be concerned with that could have impacts to the state of Minnesota uh, because they it's it's already been said that at the 100-year level there's no impacts to Minnesota if there's no impacts to Minnesota on on a on a flood fight, if there's no impacts, how could you have environment, environmental impacts? How can we say there's no impacts? We've got 30, we've got, we got a whole township that's going to be underwater. But, but we're, we're, talk, we're talking about building the difference between to the 500-year level now right. and the 100-year level. That is why it was Nancy Otto and I who, after that, we went in and we, talk, we talked to the Diversion Authority and went through Land Management Committee and all of them, and they all agreed then to back off on the 500-year flood protection for Oxbow, Hicks, and Abaki, and to go back and build to a 100-foot level just like everybody else. They should be entitled to build to that level just like Oakport Township got to build to that level, and just like any other community up and down this Red River Valley got to build to that level. And they, just because they're in North Dakota, we should not deny them of that. And the fact that part of that project is, is attached to the uh, diversion project doesn't mean it still wasn't the right thing to do to give them protection. But the 500-year protection certainly was not necessary, except for the fact you were going to flood it out intentionally. And the 500-year, the 500-year has been. Well, I know, but not because not until it was forced. So how can you say there was no intention to violate the law? Well, at, even at that point in time, even at that point in time, even it was the 500-year, mm -hmm. there was there was still the belief amongst the uh, the authority and the attorneys that we were not violating Minnesota law. Well, there's difference of opinion. Well, of course there is. There are, there's, there's difference of opinion in the diversion. There's no question about it. But you just don't throw things out, and just because something is thrown out, that's automatically correct. Either way. It, exactly. Either way. <laughs> <laughs> either way. Does Mr. Nelson want to be heard? Did you want to be heard? Uh, Go ahead. I hope you all got my email, and obviously some of you uh, have read it. No. I won't reread the whole thing. Obviously, I'll just point out a couple of things with the with the DNR. What they sent to you on January 14th of this year, all of you hopefully got that. They very clearly said that the acquisition of property in anticipation of construction before the EIS is complete and determined to be adequate. That's a key point. Adequacy of the EIS is in violation of Minnesota law. So with the OHB issue, you know, it went back and forth. Was it part of the project? Wasn't it? I mean, that everybody knows that horror story. And with the future purchases, that won't be an item because you can't say it's in, independent or not independent or 
as independent utility because the future purchases will be directly for the channel and parts of the diversion that are fully diversion related. So that argument is gone. And that was a big key with the DNR, whether they could prove it was part of the project or not. And that's when the 500 year level came into play because it was because of the staging area where the height got determined. Mm -hmm. And it's actually well above the, the 500 year level. It's above that for the staging area, but that's kind of irrelevant at this point. But it, there was no doubt that the reason of the height, like you said, was because of the staging area. So that argument's gone. So the part now that is key is future purchases of land are in violation of Minnesota law. And there's $101,700,000 designated for land acquisition specifically for the diversion. So that is a clear violation of Minnesota law. Um, the other thing with the impacts, Moore Engineering redid the study because they did their original study with the incorrect numbers. They used FEMA numbers to do the study to show impacts to Minnesota. It took some doing, but I finally convinced them to redo the study with the Army Corps numbers because I hope you all know, I know Kevin, you know very well that there's a difference between the FEMA numbers and the Army Corps numbers and they're pretty significantly different. Mm -hmm. And the Army Corps numbers are what is being used to justify this project. Everybody knows that pretty clearly, but they, for some reason, you can decide why they did it. They used the lower FEMA numbers, which are several feet lower to show uh, no impacts to Minnesota. When they redid the study, I don't know if you got it. I, if you want it, I can send it to you all. Lee Bouvet sent it to me, so it was done by more engineering. It's not my interpretation of it, it's what he sent me. And the impacts <laughs> go well into Clay, all of Clay County from the from Oxbow, Dyke, South, and well into uh, Wilkin County. There's many cross sections on this map, and there's, I believe it's 26 of them that go off the map into Wilkin County. So it goes miles and miles and miles into Wilkin County. So we need to stop saying there's no impacts from this. Ring date because the current construction that was done this summer and fall currently is going to cause impacts to Minnesota, how it's currently constructed. More engineering has the study and I'll get it to you. As some of you also know, Mark Dayton was here on September 3rd. Some of you I know made it there and some of you didn't, but for those of you that weren't there, he clearly said that only himself and Commissioner Landweir were the only two people authorized to make decisions on this project for a project of this magnitude. Uh, it has also been made very clear by several Minnesota officials that there will be no Minnesota state money coming for this project. So any money that you are promising, even though there's no physical money happening now, you're promising money for the future, if it's not coming from the state of Minnesota, that leaves local Moorhead and Clay County. The joint powers agreement that is currently on fmdiversion.com clearly states that 10% of the design costs come from Minnesota. It's the current one that's out there. Shake your head, but that's what it says. Follow the link, that's what it says. It also says, and that's 11,600,000 for this year, so that's 1.16 million doing some quick math. It's Clay County and Moorhead money, so somewhere that needs to be uh, addressed. It also says that even though Minnesota won't initially pay it, it's, it specifically says North Dakota will initially pay the costs. And then it says Minnesota members will reimburse North Dakota. There's a couple different flavors of how it states it, but one of the methods of repaying it involves an interest rate. It doesn't designate what the interest rate is, but it says you will be charged interest on this money that you will have to pay back. And then at the end of that section, it says that the diversion authority or any party to this agreement may obtain a court order directing a party to fund its share of the cost of the project. That's directly in the joint powers agreement that was signed by people sitting right here. Um, I also, I mean, everybody believes that Fargo needs flood protection. No one is saying they don't need flood protection. Everybody believes they should build their in-town dikes, but there's uh, 80 some million in there for in town dike, combination of in town dikes and OHP. I firmly believe they should build their in town dikes, but I don't see why Clay County should be promising future money to build Fargo's dikes. I don't know for sure, but I would doubt Fargo came over and paid for Moorhead's dikes or Oakport's dikes. Um, so I guess all I'm, uh, all I'm asking is that you 
seriously consider these items and I would hope you would honor Minnesota law as it was clearly stated as the, the, the key point is the acquisition of property for anticipation of construction before the EIS is complete and determined adequate. So even if you take out the part about money, take money out of it, whether we got to pay money or we don't at this point, take that out, there's a clear violation of Minnesota law. So thanks for listening. Thanks, thank you. Um, thank you, Don, for speaking. One of the big issues Don has is in the last paragraph, um, how much debt you are willing to put Clay County into for a project that may never happen. And I, I believe that's kind of been answered, that at least at this time, uh, there is no debt to Clay County. And um, I think I've been kind of reassured of that. I don't know about you, Don, or the rest of the board members, but uh, Kevin, Brian, could you just speak to that for a moment again? Because uh, that was one of the big concerns Don had. Mr. Chair, sure. yeah, go ahead. Just, <clears throat> well, you know, as I, I guess I stated in my somewhat opening statement, this may be, well, there's a lawsuit going on right now, as you stated. And you, can, you could have five attorneys sitting here telling you different opinions of what is the obligation, what is the interpretation of the Joint Powers Agreement, what is the obligation of the state of Minnesota, what is the obligation of Clay County. But, uh, and, and no matter even <clears throat> when there's when there's a uh, probably a court ruling on the on the current lawsuit, and I, I'll say this: whether who's what side wins, there will be appeals and it'll be dragged on. So we have to go on, I guess, what we believe and what we've been reassured and and what what is in there, and that is that there's no Clay County funds or Moorhead funds going into this. Um, then I one more, another question Don brought up just uh, before he stepped down having to do with uh, Minnesota law. <coughs> if, if this would violate Minnesota law, this particular part that Don spoke of, wouldn't Minnesota step in with their own lawsuit and try to uh, make this right? If, if they look upon it as a violation? Um, I think that's, that's a question. If, if we do something that technically would violate Minnesota law, would Minnesota step in? Or if the Diversion Authority, whatever, would do something in <coughs> violation of Minnesota law, then do we have an interstate situation where there's a, a judge might put an injunction in? Right. Well, I think that's a good point, Wayne. I, I mean, that's the problem with these things. There's a lot of lawyers involved, and they're all going to argue this out. and. Uh, but I had that question. So the budget is all North Dakota money, mm -hmm. and the land acquisition money is that going to be used for just North Dakota property? I assume, or as, as far as far as I know, at this yeah. point in time, it's, it's so. Given that, uh, you know, I, I there, there's I, one exception that yes. that we would have to check into, and that would be on. There has been a couple of cases of hardship. Yes. Lands. I think we have three parcels in Minnesota. Three parcels in Minnesota that have been purchased. Um, I'm not so sure that those parcels were purchased at, as the, and I don't believe they were, in terms of the direct line of the of the diversion itself or the tieback levies that would fall in the Minnesota land where construction would take part. Uh, what those could have been is there could they could have been potential parcels that would have been deep in the staging area where they would have required buyouts, not as a result of construction, but as a result of that they would have had to have been bought out anyway mm -hmm. um, for the purpose of the flooding of that property uh, if the project was completed. But none of them that I'm aware of were in the area where it was designated needed for the construction of the project. The, the other issue I've got with what Mr. Nelson said is that Minnesota won't put any money into this project. Well, you know, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure who speaks for the Minnesota legislature and when that decision is made, but that's going to be sometime in the future when an official request for a certain dollar amount is made from the state of Minnesota. Yeah. You know, and uh, I told him when I talked to him yesterday, the problem is, in my opinion, is that partisan politics are starting to enter into this 
diversion project rather than what's in the best interest of the most people and that live in this region and uh, you know and I say that because we were told by the previous administration in the state of Minnesota that Minnesota would honor their obligations and pay their fair share of the diversion now we've got people saying that they won't and so I say that we don't know that, nor does anybody, until the time comes when there's an official request for funds from the state of Minnesota. This, um, this group of, of four legislatures, and I think Don was referring to them in his comments, um, stating that there would be no money from Minnesota le legislatures on this project. Uh, the spokesman of those four was also on a public radio program and said he does believe that the Fargo diversion needs to be built and uh, the fargo mora diversion needs to be built and so i, I think we're we're stretching a little bit i think obviously he's a legislature right now and if, and if, if there's certain parts he doesn't like we have to work with them but he was also one who said from and, and those all said let's wait till the minnesota eis is done we have it at the diversion authority we made it clear we went back with what the governor said and we said stop any construction until the EIS is done. And we have done that with the exception of the Oxbow Hicks and Bakke level but the Oxbow Hicks and Bakke project is within the 100 year flood plain issue. It's exactly what Moorhead did when they built all theirs. Now what if, what if things stopped right now and Moorhead had theirs built and Fargo didn't? What would, what would that have done to Fargo? Would we have liked it if Fargo would have come over to us and said, oh, wait a minute, you can't be building that yet. It, go, it works, these things work both ways. So, and the main thing is to get protection for everybody. And I do believe that, that uh, when we can sit down, you know what, the, the, the problem out there is, is there are certain people who think that this can be done with no impacts. You just said that you want to get it so there's no problem for anybody. What about my community? But, but that's a problem. Well, sure, but the the point is, is how do we get with the least amount of impacts? Jeff? Yeah, you're going to count that more people are worth more than other people. So, well, isn't that the way it is? That in some instances, that how that's how it has to be. What if the dam was at Georgetown and we we're going to flood Oak, uh, Oakport? You know, how would you feel about that? Well, if all if all the population and all the jobs and all the hospitals and all the schools and everything were north of there, then that's the way that, that's what it have to be. We, we haven't looked at all the uh, possibilities. Maybe there's a way to do it yet without. We, uh, you know, what our group hasn't seen one credible alternative from engineers out come in from outside. Well, the course of, of the course and the individual independent engineers who have studied this, there hasn't been a credible alternative that can work that's been brought forward. Not one. Well, we haven't, we haven't combined things very well. We've said one thing won't work or another thing won't work, but, but what, about the, what about some damages downstream in, in, and some upstream rather than all being upstream? Yeah. You know, well, things like that. We haven't looked at it. It We're, has been looked at. Well, well, show me that. It hasn't. You haven't combined well, the, things. The minute, the, minute you, the minute you move the impacts north they keep going north there's well, okay a partial rather than the full thing the full thing was what you looked at before but how about couldn't they take six inches instead of a foot uh, all the way north well that and that's something that you can certainly look at that's exactly what EIS is trying to do well, so let's wait. Let it, let's, let's wait for it and that's exactly what I said let's let it finish that's what I was trying to say John let's let the Minnesota EIS finish except you're stop you're, you're gonna spend a hundred million dollars buying more land you're not waiting <clears throat> the, it's, it's land on North Dakota side. If they want to buy the land, they can buy the land. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're voting for it. What? But we're voting for it. You're asking us to vote for it right now. It's, it's voting for what's going to be needed for this project. Right. Right. But that's, that's progressing with the project. All right. We'll agree to disagree. Grant. I'll make a motion to approve the 2015 Diversion Authority budget as requested. We have a motion as our second. I second. We have a second by Frank. Any further discussion? Yes, um, Mr. Yes. Chair. Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Don for giving us this letter and his presentation tonight. Um, I am going to vote for this because I've been satisfied at this point that, um, at least for now, 
and maybe years into the future, there will be no Clay County funds um, going toward this. And also, um, regarding Minnesota law, I think uh, those questions have been answered. But uh, again, I think Don has had very um, legitimate concerns, expressed himself very well, and um, I appreciate his input very much. And Mr. Chair, when we vote, I'd like you to call the roll, please. I certainly will. Any other comments? Thank you to call the roll, please. Yes. Robert. No. Gross. Yes. Ingersoll. Yes. Campbell. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Brett. <coughs> we'll finish up uh, on our uh, committee reports. John, you're ready to go through some? Sure. <clears throat> well, we started out last week after the meeting with our budget meeting. I thought it went well. Uh, people tried real hard to uh, <clears throat> to whatever comments they had to re relate them to budget, not, you know, not very successfully. They were still talking about uh, assessments, but, uh, but there's legitimate concern for the transfer to, to Agland, and we need to, we need to be aggressive at, with the legislature and try to get uh, them to realize how important that, uh, that is to, to try to lower the impact on Agland. It's, it's getting really ridic ridiculous on the, the shift. So I think that was the big thing that the message we got from from people, and uh, uh, I would love for people to to have had some comments about our actual budget, but uh, there weren't any, and uh, like always. So um, on Thursday night we had a uh, Lakes and Prairies uh, meeting. Uh, it was a special meeting that we had uh, some training at the meeting for both the board of the uh, Head Start Policy Council and the Lakes and Prairies board. Uh, it was announced that night that. Uh, that our director, uh, Joe Peterson, will be uh, uh, retiring uh, in March or April, and uh, we're working out uh, possible scenarios as to what to do. We're, we continue to, to work to, uh, uh, towards a merger with West Central Community Action, and the director there is, uh, is uh, in a position where he could be, could be named also the director for us for the interim, and uh, until the, such time he uh, uh, he retires, and then, and then we could have a new director for for both. So that's that's in the works as far as planning, and and I think it's a, I think it's a very good uh, progressive move to to be continue to work on this possible merger because we want to be in front of uh, uh, so in some places uh, authorities are are uh, are forcing mergers, and if we can choose choose the merger we want to do ahead of time, that's certainly going to be better for all of us. So. So we continue to work towards that. Maybe Wayne has more to, to say on that. The uh, AMC conference, I think, uh, went well. Uh, I was at uh, several meetings. One was the, uh, my <clears throat> Environment and Natural Resources Committee. And it was pretty much routine stuff. We, we, put, we made some suggestions for amendments to the uh, policy, uh, uh, policies that the AMC approved. And uh, those were all approved at the, uh, at the annual meeting as well. Uh, nothing, nothing uh, major. They were all pretty routine kinds of things. I was at the extension meeting, and uh, Jenny sat in on that as well, and uh, and uh, so she uh, got to meet some of the folks uh, folks there. Uh, it was uh, we, were, we were beginning the process. Uh, it's already been three years since the last uh, memorandum of agreement uh, with the counties, and you know, I was on the last committee that, that had made recommendations. You probably remember we we had a. Uh, situation where I think it was a, a half a percent increase and then two years with one and a half percent increase uh, and uh, but that'll be uh, ready for renegotiations in this next year and um, the new committee has been set up to to begin that process of figuring out what the uh, where, what the request will be from the counties and uh, all the counties uh, in the state uh, agreed last time and went along with it and hopefully that'll be done again uh, this year. Um, let me see. I, the one uh, session I went to, uh, uh, information uh, session I went to, was on sex trafficking, and found out that Fargo Moorhead is one of the uh, one of the major centers for for sex trafficking in the in the region. Uh, of course, the Twin Cities, uh, uh, Bemidji, uh, Duluth, uh, Rochester, Moorhead, and Fargo are all listed as major centers for 
uh, for sex trafficking, and, and most of the uh, sex trafficking is with minors, with, uh, with children. And uh, it's something we need to really be aggressively trying to, trying to fight. Um, those, I guess, were the, the um, things that I, that I attended. So that was it. Thank you, John. Okay, last week I had, uh, John, we, we, we all know what happened with the truth and taxation hearing. That was, um, it wasn't a hearing, but a public information meeting. On Thursday morning, we had our Clay County Joint Powers meeting, and at that meeting, we pretty much finalized our intergovernmental retreat. Um, uh, I think we're going to have a pretty good panel. There's going to be um, one panel is going to consist of young business professionals um, uh, coming in to talk about, uh, and I don't know if anybody happened to see just this morning's paper when it talked about. What's the name of that organization over in Fargo now? Uh, Tammy, um, it was just in the paper this morning. Tammy Miller. Tammy Miller is un involved with, but uh, they're, they're, they have like six criteria that they're really looking at, or six important factors. And, and one of the top three are, uh, what do we do with our um, young students that are here to realize that there, there is an expanding good base of good paying jobs available in our region to keep them here as opposed to moving away. And so, and that's kind of tying into with part of what our, um, one of our sessions is gonna be at the intergovernmental retreat. And then we have, um, uh, then we're gonna have some, um, um, Jim from the uh, Greater Fargamore Economic Development. We're gonna have some of those people are gonna follow up that panel. And then in the afternoon, there's gonna be a panel with the, um, school districts on issues that are important to them. But it'll be a good day. Um, then, <coughs> of course, then we also, we all, we're at the um, conferences in St. Cloud, and I want to uh, start off by uh, saying uh, congratulations to you, John. John uh, received the President's Award. Um, that's a very, very distinguished award that's given out annually to uh, someone who is very deserving and is, has uh, committed a lifetime, long time amount of work to county government. Uh, John being a past uh, AMC president, we're from that fact, from being from Clay County, we're also proud of that. But this year there was, uh, there was actually, it was the first time I've seen it where they gave two. But uh, we just wanted to congratulate you, John, and tell you it was well deserved. We're very happy for you. And they stuck his family in there for it, so they were, his family was able to be there for him. Yeah. And it was, those, those, are good, those are exciting times. Uh, at the conference, um, I did attend the transportation meeting. And uh, oddly enough, one of, the, one of the most interesting things that I found coming out of the transportation meeting was, was the um, dis discussion about uh, broadband. Um, and, and the importance that that has even through our transportation and the, the need to get that into rural areas. And, you know, there, there, is, there are efforts going on out there right now to do that. And um, uh, one of the motions that was passed in the platform was actually to, because it talked about broadband for uh, going for counties and cities, uh, but it, it didn't really talk about townships in there. And, and how important broadband is for townships too. And so we, there was language that was modified to put in there to make sure that, that it also included townships. And then, and of course, in our region, townships are <coughs> extremely important. So, so that was very interesting to see how that is becoming a, a topic. And I think that topic uh, carried over to general government, I think broadband probably continued over to general government and others. Uh, then um, um, the other session that I wanted to talk about that I went to that I found interesting was the uh, the, the top the um, one on data practices and. Um, maybe a question for. Um, for you, Brian, 
or Darren, do have we designated an authority in Clay County for data practices? Yes, Mr. Chair, we have. And it's you? No, it's Jenny. It's Jenny? Yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. we did do that? Yes, we did. Well, good. I'm glad we're on top of that part of it. Um, but I did bring back this um, um, whole hand, handout that they had. Uh, and I think, Darren, maybe it would be good if you would take this and follow through with it because there's, there's a lot of potential legal issues we can get ourselves into if we don't follow uh, these things correctly. And some of them were just modified uh, just recently. So I'll leave that with you, Darren. You can get after me. That is all I have. Right. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the TMT public meeting uh, has been mentioned a couple times and we did have a little follow-up in regards to that um, so we can try and understand the, the system better. I know um, <coughs> Commissioner Whalen and I had a conversation last week and frankly uh, just to hopefully keep the board informed that we would like to, to move forward with probably having a um, informal meeting with um, the legislators in regards to it on the, um, I'll say the, 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 the homestead uh, exemption, the 0.5 percent that people, the farmer, the farm egg land pays for when it qualifies for it, up to 1.9 million dollars. We'd like to, we talked about like to see that increase. So uh, we're going to try and coordinate a meeting um, with uh, our legislators in regards to that. And then also, though, uh, probably even have Nancy give the board a presentation. I'll be talking to her about the valuation system and how we, we are uh, audited by the state and how we stay with the 92, 105, so we understand that just a little bit better. And uh, I think maybe you folks would like to understand that as well because you get comments on that. So Nancy and I will work on, on that. I haven't talked to her about that yet, but uh, we'll be discussing that factor. Um, and then I attended the, the Joint Powers um, Authority meeting with the, the, the local entities and, and uh, Commissioner Campbell has addressed that quite well in regards to our time spent there. Uh, the management training, I, I guess I want to thank uh, Commissioner Gross for attending that meeting. I think it means a lot when you can take the time to, to sit in on some of the training that the the managers go through, and, and I thought it was really good training as well. And thank you for, for supporting that, that type of training. I, it's important. If uh, you guys didn't think it was important, we wouldn't sponsor it and, and pay for it and, uh, through your budget approval. So we really appreciate that. Attended AMC as well. Um, yeah, the broadband discussion was pretty good. It was in general government as well, and it was kind of interesting. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't probably a unanimous uh, discussion about the broadband because uh, there were some commissioners in there that felt that if a population needed the broadband system for their business, that they should move closer to a community rather than the broadband being system being brought out to the rural population. And another one would state then that this is just the rural electric power when it was brought out to every farm and in the community. It's it's just a it's a retrace of, of the same steps. So I guess you, maybe there's a couple ways to look at things. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, it was kind of obvious. So, uh, we're, uh, we're also working on, and we talked about this at the last meeting too, in reports that we're working on a, a um, correctional facility uh, of going back to the uh, original committee members. We are in contact with them and we'll bring to the working with uh, uh, your chair, um, Commissioner Campbell and Whalen, who serve on the finance, that jail finance committee right now as to the members and things. And then we'll bring those, those nominations to you um, next week for your approval on it. So uh, with that, that's about it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, one more item. I, I did attend another session on retirement, I guess, which I, I said. But 
When I went to that session, I was looking at this is for people who plan on retiring. And what I found out really it was for actually new employees, you know. Yeah. What are you going to do for retirement, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's a few counties that are getting involved in um, getting together with a financial institution, I guess, or whatever. And they're planning, you know, let employees put so much money into a plan and stuff like that. And we don't, do we do anything like that there? The, we yeah, do. we do. Mm -hmm. I mean, other than PERA, I mean. Yeah, we still have another one. Okay, very good, okay. But it looked like some good plans for some of those, so good. Glad to see we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mr. Chair, and I think what Commissioner Gross is talking about, I attended that as well. And there's, uh, there was four or five counties in there that, that uh, we have a deferred compensation plan, uh, but the county participates in it and, and contributes some dollars. And uh, it was very minimal. One was county was $10 a pay period, another one was $15 a pay period, and was to encourage positive savings for the future. And I think that's what you're talking about, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We we have the uh, deferred comp program, but uh, he was thinking. I think you were thinking that uh, we don't have we anything should, to match. We don't match it at all. No. And even a, even the small amount, as part of a compensation package, uh, may be something we should look at in, in or we consider. Match I think. The well, the PR we match. We required. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're required. To, yeah. so, but some counties do on the deferred. What's comp the too. What's the name of the? Uh, Nationwide, nationwide is uh, who we go through right now. Where, where employees have the ability to pre-tax uh, dollars into that. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. that the, it's just that there's no there's no match. I mean, some no of the count. counties are doing a match on it. You know, and I don't know if you need another plan again. You know, but it's just uh, they felt it was a mm -hmm. another incentive for employees. You know, uh, like I say, the retirement thing. You look at retirement. That people that are planning retirement, but it's really the day you get hired is when you start planning for retirement. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? Be drinking.